Revelation 3982, from the 21st of February 1947. Cause of Doubt of the Different Schools of Thought Truth Observe the development of the different schools of thought and you will have to confirm that first there had to be doubts or counter opinions which stimulated several like minded people to exchange thoughts and which finally led to the establishment of new teachings, more or less successfully, depending on the number of doubters and seekers of truth. The desire for truth will always be inherent in the seekers, and yet there are different schools of thought thus divergent teachings of faith. And this finds its explanation in the nature of the followers, especially those from whom the transforming thoughts have emerged. Their way of life is decisive as to how far they are in the truth, for it depends on their way of life alone how far God, as the giver of truth, participates in their mental work. If you humans want to be in truth then you absolutely have to put yourselves into a state through a God-pleasing way of life so that he himself can impart the truth to you through correctly guided thinking, if you don't hear his voice within you, but also seriously desire the truth, otherwise you won't ask questions and thus won't be able to receive an answer either. But only doubts will cause you to ask questions and doubts will befall you if you seriously think about what you are taught. Therefore it is urgently necessary that you mentally deal with the spiritual knowledge which is imparted to you from outside, otherwise no other spiritual direction could ever be taken. And it is up to you whether your thinking is guided right or wrong. But it will always be right if you ask God for his help, if you endeavor to comply with his will which is expressed in his word, which can be imparted to you everywhere. Seek God and you will find him, seek the truth and it will become yours, yet you will not be able to fathom it purely intellectually, for which the different schools of thought will give you evidence. Yet they shall give you evidence of the fact that their followers were intellectually active themselves that they felt prompted by doubts about the truth of their own possessions to seek a doctrine of faith which appeals to them, and that this activity of thought is the first prerequisite in order to arrive at the pure truth. It cannot be gained without one's own reflection, and one's own reflection must lead to the awareness of one's inability to penetrate the truth on one's own, and God as the eternal truth must be called upon for support but anyone who finds the path to God will also always endeavor to live in accordance with his will, and thus he will fulfill all prerequisites. He will live in love, acknowledge God and desire the truth. And if he now pays attention to his thoughts, if he dwells longer on the disputed question and then acknowledges the thoughts flowing towards him as being of divine origin, he will be introduced to the pure truth and it will give him full satisfaction. He will have the inner conviction to think right and will no longer be subject to doubts about it. For God, as the eternal truth, also wants to convey this to people who are worthy of it. And they will also remain faithful to a thus gained school of thought and be able to convincingly stand up for its truth towards their fellow human beings. Amen.